Welcome to the Radiologic Technologist YouTube channel. I am looking for an excuse to use my new webcam and Yeti microphone. So I'm going to respond to an email I got today, uh, apparently seven hours ago. We're going to, um, I'm going to answer a question for someone. I get frequent questions by email. This is from a gentleman who lives in a major metropolitan city. Uh, he's in his fifties and, uh, he is in a field unrelated to healthcare, and he says um, he's been in this field for about 30 years, and he wants to make a change to something entirely different. Uh, not because there's no work in what he's doing. There's plenty. Uh, of course, it's difficult, but whose job isn't? Tedious, boring, contrary to, to what most people believe. Uh, and he feels a bit isolated in his work. Most of his time, it's from home and in front of a computer. Anyway, he says he wants a career where he can interact with people uh, and in a service to actually help those in need. Um, so he says, first, do you think I'm too old? So let, let's just start there. Um, I had people in my class, and this was back in 2003, I had people in my class that were, I'd say late 50s. Um, they were laid off from a microchip plant back in Phoenix. That's where I was at the time and uh, they were doing a retraining type program. So uh, no, 50 uh, is not uh, too old. You can go back to school at any age, in my opinion. Uh, the only thing that restricts you from going into x-ray would be uh, the physical aspect. If you can't help patients on and off the table or, or up and out of a wheelchair and back into a wheelchair, or maybe move them around on the table, that's gonna be what limits you. So yeah, any age is a good age. Um, it's up to you and, and, and your physical prowess. And so the next question he said was, um, uh, he's confused on whether or not the field is saturated or not. I don't know who to believe. He lives in this metropolitan area and doesn't see a lot of job openings. So here's what you have to ask yourself in that situation. How many schools are in that area? Um, in the Phoenix area where I used to live, there was uh, at one point seven schools, seven x-ray schools, and it oversaturated the market. I personally never had a problem finding a job. The people I knew and that I went to school with didn't have a problem finding jobs because really um, the clinical rotation is one big job interview and, and everyone you know, hopefully understands that when they're going through their clinical rotation that you're, you're really being interviewed for a job because what hospital would not want to hire you after spending basically two years uh, training you how to be a tech? So um, another answer to that question would be, uh, we are headed for a huge um, tech crisis. Uh, and in fact, it's not just x-ray techs, it's across the board healthcare. Um, doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, uh, we're gonna have a shortage across the board because we have such a huge influx of baby boomers that are gonna be hitting our healthcare system. Um, here in Southern Idaho, we're predicting about a 40% increase in uh, patient volumes over the next 10 years because of the baby boomers entering the healthcare market. Um, schools are not keeping pace with that and hospitals, unfortunately, are taking just the opposite stance. They're still trying to squeeze more and more work out of, less, uh, out of fewer employees uh, to make more of that almighty dollar. And um, that's the problem we're facing right now is there's there's not enough techs out there currently. And over the next 10 years, it's just going to be unfathomable. Unfathomable. I wanted to use that word, but I just can't use it. So don't worry about the field being saturated. Now, if you're, you know, in one of those metro areas, in Florida, California, a state that is highly populated, New York maybe, um, it will be more difficult. I can tell you up here in Idaho, we've got tons of openings across the board, x-ray, CT, MR, uh, just about everything. So, you know, if you're in a highly populated area, you need to ask yourself a couple of questions because one thing you can do is piecemeal yourself out. You can uh, PRN or work uh, part-time at one hospital and then a little bit at another hospital and that's how a lot of people get started 
uh, if they have difficulty finding a job is take part-time work first and then when a full-time job comes open then you you move up the chain um, but again it's going to depend most on where you live and how many schools are in that area so let's see um, I would admit I'm I'm confused by all the terms of different specialties CT sonographer MRI I mean to say I know the difference of course but don't understand the schooling so here's the deal the the baseline is just x-ray school um, you know the fancy word or the medical term is radiologic technology but an uh, x-ray school is a basic two year program that you have to go to in order to qualify to sit for the national boards and you have to pass those boards to get a job there are still about four or five states left and Idaho's one of them that does not require that state licensure but most of the hospitals well all the hospitals do but there's still local mom and pop physician clinics that will let their secretaries take x-rays and, and urgent cares and things like that that will save money by not hiring a licensed technologist so so you go to school for x-ray and then you cross train into ct or mri yes some small little subspecialty classes have popped up uh in the past couple of years the local community college here offers a little ct program i think it's a semester long uh, but it's just not required um, you do i believe for the new ct certification now you do have to have 16 hours of some kind of training but you can you can get that in a weekend course or an online course but the, i guess what i'm trying to say is there's no two-year program mandatory like there is for x-ray now ultrasound you also have to go to school for and, and here's here's the gray area that confuses a lot of people outside the field um, you can cross train on almost all of this on the job once you become an x-ray tech and your license and you're working you could be cross trained at your hospital in CT MRI ultrasound um, and interventional radiology you cannot cross train into nuclear medicine because that requires an additional license and it's two more years of school and then PET scanning is a branch off of nuclear medicine so I went to school for x-ray cross trained CT while I was an x-ray student and when I graduated x-ray school I got a job as a CT tech and I did both x-ray and CT on the night shift and then I went back to school for two years and took ultrasound and then I learned MRI on the job so I had four modalities in about a five-year span um, so I hope that clarifies a little bit for you about the schooling I know it, it gets kind of confusing um, I see in the forums a lot of people are still asking can I just go to x-ray school online um, and I would highly caution against that I, I used to say nobody offers that you have to go to school but I think I'm hearing in the background that some schools are kind of doing a remote program where uh, you take the classes online but you go to clinicals nearby I mean we have at the local hospital here we have one person in our nuclear medicine department that's a nuclear medicine student who uh, and we're in Idaho they're taking classes down at uh, a, a college in Utah online and I think they have to go there every so often and they're doing their clinicals here and we're doing the same thing for an ultrasound tech they live here they work here as an x-ray tech but they're taking an online program for ultrasound doing their clinicals here and that's going to satisfy so I, I think the trend we're going to see in the coming years is you might not have to go sit in that chair like we used to have to do you may be able to take those classes online and only go to campus once a semester or twice a semester and do your clinicals wherever you're at so I, I hope that clears up a little bit about the schooling well I think that's it um, I, I would say yes there's plenty of room for you in the field uh, you're never too old as long as you can physically handle the work uh, that's the biggest limiter if you have a bad back or something like that it's probably not a good idea and uh, you don't have to start an x-ray that's where a lot of people start um, when I started in 2003 that's where you had to start you couldn't get into ultrasound school until you went through x-ray school um, when I got into the ultrasound program at Gateway Community College there in Phoenix you had to either be a respiratory therapist uh, a nuke med tech a physical therapist a nurse or did I say respiratory therapist already there was or an x-ray tech you had to be one of the five allied health professionals to get into the ultrasound program 
but they don't require it like that anymore. So you could go straight into ultrasound school. And if you're, if you're interested in echosonography, that's kind of the upper echelon of the ultrasound world. And, and by that, I mean, they just make more money. Um, you can actually get into an echo program right off the street if you have the right uh, prerequisites to get in. So, you know, if you're looking to get into healthcare and make top dollar, I, I say shoot for echo if, if that uh, suits your fancy. Um, if you like uh, meat and potatoes, x-ray is all over the place. They put you in the ER, the ICU, the operating room, outpatient centers, hospitals, trauma, level one trauma centers, night shift, day shift. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do. Fluoroscopy, uh, and that segues into interventional and, and uh, lots of stuff. So if you're interested in all that other thing, those other things, I have plenty of other videos on this channel that uh, talk about the different careers and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I hope that's been helpful for you and maybe some other folks. And uh, now I can see how my new video looks. Thanks for watching.